everyone, Shane here with RVs of America or ROA Off-Road. I just wanted to share a video with you. I think this is one of the most common questions we get here at ROA. And I think there's a lot of misinformation out there on the internet and we've been meaning and wanting to do this video. But we actually came across a, uh, a guy, his name is Robert Pepper. He has a YouTube channel, it's the L2SFBC. And he is actually really, really good and informative on this topic. And instead of us recreating what he's already created, we actually reached out to him a bit ago and started talking with him. And we've you know, started working out a deal. He said that we would be able to share some of his content and videos with our community, our roamers. Now, here at RVs of America, if you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're existing, thank you. Uh, one of the things that we really, really want to do here on our channel is just give good information. We're very much about education. If you've watched some of our tours, they're very in-depth, very detailed, but very educational too. I know we sometimes throw some entertainment and fun stuff in there and we try to be educational in a fun way, but really we love good, good detailed videos and information. And we get this question asked all the time about towing and sway. Um, we get the questions about what type of vehicle should I have, but we'll talk a little bit about videos at the end, but right now we are gonna talk about sway, what causes sway, and there's a lot of false ideas out there about, oh, you know, if, if there's too much weight in the back of the trailer, put more weight on the front of the trailer, or if there's too much weight on the tongue, put it towards the back, and, and, and a lot of that's not actually true. Same with tow vehicles are so, so, so important, and a lot of people don't quite understand it. So, without anything else, we're gonna go over to Robert Pepper's video and let him take this away and explain, and I do wanna talk at the end a little bit about what type of tow vehicle I believe you should be looking for when you are going out to purchase a camper or any type of trailer or RV. So thank you, Robert Pepper. Once again, go check out his stuff on YouTube. Very, very good. I think you'll enjoy it. So why do we care about weight distribution? Well, watch this. This is trailer sway. So here's a Pajero and Caravan timer in the top right hand corner. You can see about four seconds later, completely out of control, seven seconds, completely inverted and has crashed. Now, if you don't get your weight distribution right, you could end up like that. And that is why weight distribution on trailers is really, really important. So here's the setup. It's a one tenth scale model. The trailer weighs 1000 grams, about a kilogram, same as the car. And then we have a total of three weights here, each of which weighs around 300 grams. And those weights we can shift into different locations. Now at the front, the vehicle is tethered as the treadmill uh, moves backwards. And that's a really important difference between the model and reality. Because in reality, you obviously don't have a tether and therefore the car can go anywhere it wants to and roll, leave the road, etc. Whereas with the tether here, that can't happen. Now, what that means is for the model, the sway will get to a certain point and then it can't get any worse. Whereas in reality, it will just get worse and worse until you completely lose control. Now, for most of the demonstrations you'll see, the scale speed has been set to 90 kilometers an hour. There's a calculation formula involved to figure out the speed that treadmill needs to run to represent a scale speed of 90 kilometers an hour. One exception for that where we take it to 120 to demonstrate different speed differences. So here we've got the trailer running at that scale speed of 90 k's an hour. And we'll give it a bit of a push to create a disturbance and you can see it's stable, it comes back to center again. Now we take that 300 gram weight, put it at the back, give it a push and you can see it's no longer stable. And if that was a real life rig, then it would be up inverted at this point. And now what we're gonna do is take two of those weights, I'm gonna put them right at the front like that. And now, when we disturb the trailer, it's not as stable as it was before. Now, if you've got insufficient ball weight, you definitely need to increase it to avoid trailer sway. But if you've got too much, well, that can actually destabilize your trailer.
Now we've come to the worst possible weight distribution for any trailer, which is heavy weights at the front and back. This is unfortunately how caravans tend to be designed and what some people do is they find they've got a heavy nose weight so they add a weight right to the back of the trailer which is absolutely the worst thing you can do because as you can see it just makes the whole rig very very unstable. So this shows the most stable trailer is the one of the best weight distribution not the heaviest ball weight. So we're going to set the trailer up in the configuration we know to be unstable, which is weights front and rear. And you can see it's really waving around in there. But what we're going to do now is actually add weight to the tow car between the two axles, front and rear axles. And look at that, by adding a significant amount of weight, that's 700 grams or 70% extra, it suddenly made that unstable trailer combination very stable indeed. And this is a really big deal. So the bigger and heavier the tow car you have, the more stable your trailer rig combination will be. So we've got our unstable configuration of weights front and rear, but we've added that 700 gram weight to the centre of the trailer and look at that, it's gone stable again. The reason for that is that we've now got the weight distribution central. So a heavier trailer is actually more stable in this case than a lighter trailer, all to do with the weight distribution. Now if we take that weight off to the centre and flick it again you'll see that the sway builds up very quickly and if that was a real life situation we'd be inverted by now. So we're back to our stable configuration at 90 k's an hour equivalent and you can see that that will come back into line pretty quickly. Exactly the same again at 120 and you can see that it does settle down eventually it just takes longer. So that means that the faster you go, the more likely you're going to have problems with sway. Alright, so we're back to our unstable configuration now. And this is going up about an 8 degree slope and you can see that we displace it and it does actually settle back down. Just takes a while but it will actually settle down at this 8 degree slope. Now exactly the same configuration, exactly the same speed and you can see that it just gets out of control. So what we're learning there is that when you go uphill you're less likely to get sway but also we didn't show it, conversely going downhill you're more likely to get sway. So here we've got a one tenth scale car and trailer and I've got some weights to demonstrate the effect of weight placement on the tow car. So first we're going to take these weights and put them on the trailer right over the axles which is where they should be. Now if I move the drawbar here you can see it's actually quite hard to move and both the front wheels and the rear wheels are working to stop the movement which I'm trying to push left and right here. Now if I take these weights and put them over the drawbar, have a look at what happens. You'll see that the vehicle now pivots around the back axle because there's not much weight on the front axle. Now the more weight there is on a tyre or, the, or um, then the more grip you have and by putting a lot of weight on the drawbar I'm dramatically increasing the amount of grip on the rear axle. You can just see how much that is flattening the tyre the there but I'm dramatically decreasing the amount of grip on the front axle so therefore the vehicle doesn't have much grip on the front and that gives you problem with um, things like steering and braking. Now if I take that same weight and put it right at the back now you see the vehicle pivots around the back axle because I've reduced the weight on the back axle. You can see there's very little weight here and very little grip and then we get this pivoting problem here. So that is why having the weights right over the axle if you possibly can is the ideal because then you've got a fairly equal weight distribution front and rear and both those front and rear tyres are working to keep the trailer under control.
Okay, so let's finish up with a six point summary of what we've learned. One is weight distribution is more important than total weight. So we saw that when we moved the weights to the front and the back and the trailer became unstable, the total weight didn't change. Also, we had a fairly heavy uh, trailer and that actually was stable compared to a lighter trailer with, with poor weight distribution. Next one is too much ball weight is bad. Now this is something you commonly see on forums. Do you have trailer instability, trailer sway, add ball weight. Oh you still got it? Add more ball weight. Well where do you stop? Well the answer is you've got to have the right amount. Now exactly the right amount will vary from trailer to trailer and situation to situation but you just can't keep adding on more and more ball weight and expect all of your problems to disappear because you'll start to create new problems. I'll do more on this in another video. Um, now too much far rear weight is bad, really bad, because that starts to reduce grip on your rear wheels and your rear wheels are the ones which do the bulk of keeping your vehicle going in a straight line or where you want it to go and controlling that trailer. And then the heavier tow car is better, so this is really important. Heavier vehicles like um, things like the Land Cruiser 200 series, the Y62, even better than that, the big American trucks like the Rams and uh, then light trucks like Cantors, Fusos, Hinos, etc. Those are the best vehicles for towing heavy trailers. Now there's a rule of thumb we don't follow in Australia which says that the tow car should be heavier than the trailer, but that's nevertheless still good advice. And then um, more speed, more sway. So it actually works on the speed, speed squared law. So if you go from, let's say, 100 to 110, you're not going to get 10% more energy or 10% more sway problems. It's actually the square of, of that, so considerably more. So keep your speed down. Now one caveat to this, though, you can't say, OK, I get sway at about um, 95, I'm going to drive everywhere at 85. Because if you get sway at, say, 95 and it's a perfectly good road, it's level, it's dry, it's not windy etc. You might find that when conditions change, you're going downhill, in the wet, gust of wind, you're going to get sway at a lower speed. So I would suggest that if you get any form of sway at speeds up to 100, if your trailer is anything other than dead stable, take steps to reduce sway and stabilise and I'll go through some of those in another video. And finally, um, uphills and downhills. So if you're going uphill, you're less likely to get sway, and downhill, you're um, more likely to get sway. So take a little bit of speed off before you go down um, hills. And another tip is, as you come down a hill, you should be in a lower gear anyway, but also set your brake controller so that as you apply a little bit of brake pressure to the vehicle as you go down a hill, then proportionately more pressure goes on the trailer and that will just help keep things um, a little bit under control and reduce sway. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that and that, that was informative. I am sure you've learned something. I'm pretty sure I've even learned something and I've probably towed and driven RVs probably over 100,000 miles under my belt. So I feel like I have some experience in this and I feel like I even learned some stuff. So once again, Thank you, Robert Pepper. Go check out his stuff. It's the L2S FBC is his YouTube channel. We just really wanted to share this information with you. One of the things he doesn't talk a lot about is obviously he's talking to a different market here in the United States. We have some big trucks, which he mentioned, you know, our Rams and our Chevys and our Fords. Very, very, very good tow vehicles to have. He talked a little bit about the weight of the vehicle. And that's a question that we get asked on a regular basis. What type of vehicle should I purchase when towing a trailer and you know there's not really necessarily a perfect answer for everybody and I know that can be frustrating so give us a call we believe in just trying to help everybody in their unique situation because it depends on the trailer you're getting it depends on depends on the truck you right you know you it's a, it's it's a combination a lot of times people call in and say does your trailer sway and it's like uh, well <laughs> it depends on what you're towing it with right uh, you know even a really well balanced trailer if you're towing it with a very underrated vehicle, you're gonna, you're gonna experience more sway than you would if you were pulling it with a very overrated heavy duty vehicle, right? We had this trailer in the past um, that just had horrible sway and, and we wouldn't let people leave our shop without putting a weight distribution hitch on it. It pretty much swayed under any vehicle. Now, we, had a, we have a dually at our shop, a long bed dually. If you hook that long bed dually up to this trailer, sway went away, right? It's because that's such a heavy duty, 
you know, the truck's so much bigger, has a big wide stance, and, and so it just, it kind of just pulls it out of any type of sway. But that's obviously when we're talking about off-road trailers and campers, you know, we don't want to be rolling around in a dually, but it is really important. A rule of thumb is always have more vehicle than you do camper right? That's, that's not going to ever lead you astray. Try to go overkill. I cannot tell you how often we get that phone call where somebody calls up and they want, they want to tow a trailer that's, you know, it's rated max weight is 8,000 pounds. And they're like, well, my truck says it can pull 8,000 pounds or 9,000 pounds. And it's like, no, 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 no. That is, that is a recipe for disaster. You know, just because your truck says it can pull eight or 9,000 doesn't mean you should be pulling eight or 9,000. You know, if, if my truck says eight or 9,000 pounds, I feel like 5,000 pounds is kind of the max I'm looking at. And I'm talking loaded, you know, I'd prefer it to be, you know, three to 4,000 pounds and then loaded up and not be over 5,000 if I have a vehicle can pull eight or nine, right? So it's always better to, you know, and, and I mean, you talk to some people out there, they'll tell you, oh, 50%, 40%. Some people will say 90%. I don't agree with that last statement, but Nevertheless, it's always better to have more vehicle than trailer. So thank you so much for watching. We hope this was informative and very educational for you. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and we will keep on rolling out some more information like this. And once again, thank you again, Robert Pepper, and have a wonderful day. Talk to you later.